Rebecca. Hello. Jeff. Hi. Heidi. Hi. Thanks for letting me come out. So where are we? Uh, we are at the Lower Portal Road, uh, which is an access road to Hoover Dam. So Jeff, what kind of amphibians can we find here? Well, we've reintroduced the relic leopard frog to the site. It's a rare species of frog that has populations further downstream. And we are likely to see the red spotted toad as well. Okay, let's go frogging. Super. So we just caught a relic leopard frog over here. Uh, this guy was out foraging um, a little ways from water. Pretty attractive little guy. So how do frogs survive in the desert? Well, they're not really well adapted to the desert. Obviously this animal lives here um, in the spring. There's quite a bit of water around and while it is adapted to high heat, this is a very hot locality. It's in the lower Colorado River drainage basin. This is a, a, a slope gets quite hot in the summertime. Probably, you know, 120 is not uncommon, but it also gets cold here. And during the wintertime, they're not as active. This is a thermal spring, so the water's quite warm to begin with. Bufo punctatus, the red spotted toad. It's a beautiful female. Look at her. Gorgeous. I love know? their little pointy noses. How do you know it's a red spotted toad? Uh, just in the general characteristic. It's got these this round parotid. It's got the pointy little nose. It's a beautiful animal. And they usually have lots of red spots. These are not quite showing right now. They're outside their breeding season for the most part. So what are some common misconceptions about toads? Uh, you catch warts from them, <laughs> and uh, you don't catch warts from them. They do produce poison, so these are poison glands here. They also produce poison from their skin. It's a protective measure, keeps them from being eaten by a lot of things. How is it different than the relic leopard frog? Well, let's compare it. Hey, Heidi, can you bring that frog over? So now putting these side by side, you can see the frog has much smoother skin than the toads. Toads tend to have these warts or bumps all over them. You can see the dorsal lateral stripe on this animal right here, that line that runs down the side of the body. They don't have that. Uh, they're also, they're physically quite different in the sense of their locomotion. Frogs tend to leap more. They tend to leap after their prey or they tend to leap away from predators. Um, toads will do a little bit of the same, but they tend to hop. They don't have quite the leg muscles that the frog has. Um, these tend to be more aquatic. Toads will get further away from water and spend more time on dry land than do um, frogs, but both of them will come back to water to breed. Uh, they both lay eggs in the water. Their larval forms in the water are both uh, tadpoles and they metamorphose and turn into small frogs. So why are amphibians like frogs and toads important in ecosystems? Well, they're part of a complex network of organisms that are living in this particular area. And as such, these guys are little predators. They eat insects and they probably eat quite large numbers of insects. And in turn, they're eaten by other organisms. For example, we've talked about rattlesnakes in here. I don't know how often rattlesnakes eat frogs, but they certainly are hanging around sites where frogs are at, and I wouldn't doubt that they would take one if they have the opportunity. So one of the things we're trying to do is conserve these species for the long term. Heidi, Rebecca, Jeff, thanks for the adventure. I had a lot of fun. Hey, it was great taking you out. This was really a cool time. Thanks yes. for coming. Yeah.